So one of the big questions that I've been getting lately is how do I create balance in my life? What are some Zen and Stoic principles to create a more balanced life? Welcome to the Zen Stoic Path, where we share a modern take on timeless wisdom to help you create unshakable inner peace. I'm your host, Victor Pierantoni. Let's get into the show. Now, the question that you may want to also ask yourself is, is balance the thing that you're really seeking? Because oftentimes we have this ideal of creating a balanced life, but the reality is, is that living a life of balance is often something that's sold to us through the culture that we live in. We always talk about work-life balance and the importance of these things. And the other question that you can ask yourself to be more clear on what you mean by balance or what exactly it is that you're looking for is how fast or slow do you want to grow in life? And there is no right or wrong answer to this, right? Personal development will tell you you want to grow as quickly as you can and you want to just do these things to expand yourself and grow at all costs, which again, when you say something like grow at all costs, you might be sacrificing things that affect your well-being. The other thing is it's not necessarily wrong to want to grow slowly, right? There are various seasons that we experience in our lives and the rate of growth that we can influence can often allow us to meet the needs that we're actually seeking in terms of what we're looking for in an experience. So I ask myself and I ask my clients this question all the time, whenever we get to a juncture where we have finished a project or we've just completed a set of goals, I say, at this point in time, do you want to speed up, maintain, or slow the rate of growth? Now, here's the thing to understand about each of these and why they all tie into balance. Number one is if you want to speed up growth, you're not going to be creating balance in that moment. Usually the speeding up of growth is going to be emphasizing or doing a sprint on a certain area of life. So if you want to speed up growth in your health and fitness, it's going to be related to actually putting in the hours and the dedication and the focus into actually getting the result that you look for. However, if you're just redlining it forever indefinitely, eventually you'll burn yourself out, right? So when we want to grow faster, when we want to speed up the rate of growth, it is best to do so in sprints to actually have a contained amount of time. And you do this whenever you want to, again, accelerate or really kick off an initiative that could be in business, right? You have a, a big project, there's a big financial goal that you might have. And so you really start to put in the hours. And as you do that, you also start to take away time and focus from other areas of your life. So if you want to grow faster, then usually the best way to do it is in a sprint, a container of some sort. If you want to maintain the speed of the growth that you have, the key is to continuously engage in what the Stokes would call voluntary discomfort as a practice, right? Giving yourself opportunity to challenge yourself, but also making time for rest, making time for enjoyment and for your leisure. When you do this, when you mix the dedication, the discipline into the goals that you have, as well as making time for leisure and fun and having rest and having time with those that you love, you'll maintain the speed of your growth because you'll basically be riding the momentum of maybe a previous sprint that you had. Now, the other way that you can think about growth is if you want to slow it down. Now, why would you ever want to slow down your growth? The only reason that I usually have when anytime I want to slow things down is that when you are seeking some comfort or you're seeking some consistency in your life, when you have something like work-life balance where everything essentially is getting its due time, what you're doing is you're not necessarily getting better at a rapid rate. You might build some skill and build some repetition and some uh, consist or consistency in what you're actually doing, but you're probably going to do so in the realm of what is familiar, what is routine, what is comfortable for you. And in the realm of comfort, there is not going to be much growth, if any at all. So why would you do this? Most people would poo-poo this idea of slowing down the rate of growth or change that they have in their life. But there are some reasons to do it. And I would say one of the most important ones is to give yourself the opportunity to be truly present to life and to essentially stop and smell the flowers. This would be one of the reasons why you may want to slow things down. So what do you do when you're slowing things down? You essentially do what is important, what is needed to maintain your lifestyle, right? In terms of the work that you need to get done, but you also make a lot more time for leisure, a lot more time for exploration, adventure, and you may find growth in other ways or in other areas of life by doing this. But 
if you're wanting to slow things down, the reason that you might want to do it is to really give yourself the ability to be present with your environment, to be appreciative, to experience a greater depth of gratitude for the people that you love and spending time with them. So when it comes to this idea of balance, it's important to know where you actually want to be. Usually when people are talking about this idea of balance, they are usually referring to either maintaining or slowing down the rate of growth that they have. Now, how, how does that tie into growth exactly? The way that you can think about this is that when you are experiencing life, there are many schools of thought that have said, if you're not growing, you're dying. And the essence of life is growth. And this is true to some degree. And as human beings, we have the dignity to essentially kind of slow things down or speed things up if we choose to, right? Through our free will, we can do this. We can make this choice. Now, if you think about it from the perspective of what is your soul desire to do in this human incarnation, what do, you, what do you desire to do in this life? The soul wants to grow in the rate at, at the rate that it wants to grow. And sometimes if you're slowing things down, but you're intuitively feeling called to speed them up, life can often throw you a couple curveballs and challenges that will essentially force you to grow in those moments. So really and truly, in order to actually achieve this idea of balance, this state of equanimity with life, it's going to come with a few things, one of which is being able to become comfortable with uncertainty. When people are typically saying that they want balance, what they're actually saying is I want to slow down the amount of uncertainty that's coming into my life. Like I feel stressed, I feel overwhelmed, I feel anxious about the future and I needed to just slow down. Typically, that's what I'm hearing as a coach whenever somebody is talking about wanting balance is that the rate of growth is creating so much uncertainty, so much discomfort that that person just needs a breather. They need to come up for air, which is totally fine. Like there's nothing wrong with that. And there's it's also there's no right or wrong, right? Depends on the season of your life. The only person that's going to know what the right answer is for you is you. And that's by being able to tune in and listen to your intuition. Now, your intuition is going to speak to you in the forms of sensations, feelings, emotions. And we're going to get into how to actually live a balanced life using the Zen Stoic intentions as a framework that will allow you to do this in a way that's effective, that will allow you to do this in a way that gives you a complete experience in your day-to-day -day life so that you live fulfilled, so that you are genuinely happy and satisfied in what you're doing, and that you're able to operate at your highest level of contribution while experiencing the rate of growth that you want to experience or while experiencing the balance that you seek. So depending what it is that you're looking for, there are various Zen and Stoic principles that can really help out with this. Now, another thing that people could be saying when they say that they want balance is that they want to be happy. They want to feel a sense of satisfaction or enjoyment or happiness. And I think what's interesting is that most of the population has this very incorrect happiness formula, which is the I'll be happy when fallacy. In other words, they'll say, I'll be happy when this result is currently present. So sometimes people will associate this with the idea of balance. I'll be happy when I'm balanced, when I'll be happy when there's not so much uncertainty. And I thought this was a, an amazing quote from Alex Hermosi that he tweeted recently, which was that you've already achieved the goals that you said would make you happy. So in other words, we've already violated that fallacy. We've already proven it wrong in our lives so many times because a lot of us are currently experiencing things today that five years ago we dreamed of and didn't even realize were possible. So this idea of being happy when you have balance is not going to actually help you achieve that sensation or that experience of balance. What is, is by being able to understand yourself, being able to tune into your intuition, and using the five intentions of Zen Stoic philosophy as a way to guide you through this journey, through this experience. So the five intentions of Zen Stoic philosophy is something that I went into depth in previous episodes on this podcast. So if you haven't seen it yet, be sure to go and check out the intentions and delusions framework through Zen Stoic philosophy. It's a five part series that goes through each one of these. Now, the intentions and delusions is a framework that will help you to essentially tap into the power of your own subconscious mind in order to create inner peace, in order to create fulfillment and satisfaction in everything that you do. And it's based upon this idea and this axiom that the meta purpose of life is to live it. And in order to live our lives, it is important that we engage in life through the five fundamental experiences of what it is to be human, which are feeling, thinking, doing, expressing, and being. Very simple, but we experience our lives through these five experiences. 
everything that we experience always falls into one of these five. So you can use these five experiences and the intentions of Zen Stoic philosophy, which all point to one of these experiences as a way of creating a, a, a sense of balance based on wherever you're at and based on the rate of growth that you want to experience in your life. So here's what the five intentions are. We have embrace, understanding, discipline, sincerity, and unity. These were inspired by a lot of Zen and Stoic principles that came together and essentially created this framework. This is something that I discovered that has allowed me to experience a lot more inner peace, a sensation of balance, even though balance is not something that we have to do, right? The universe is always balanced. It's just a matter of, are we balanced in our minds? Anyway, more on that through this episode. But the idea here is that these five intentions are all inspired by Zen and Stoic philosophy and different ways that some of the Stoic philosophers achieve balance is you can think about some of the things like, for example, Marcus Aurelius, where he talked about you have power over your mind, not outside events, you know, and to remember this, right? His works in Marcus Aurelius meditations, which was actually his writings, his personal journal that got turned into a book, is how he would find balance. He would essentially reflect on his own thoughts. He would do a lot of reflection, which is going to be part of how we actually create balance through the five intentions. Or you think about somebody like Epictetus who was born into slavery, and you realize someone like him who created the dichotomy of control, which is that there are certain things that you have control over and things that you don't. And the idea is to let go of what you don't have control over and to emphasize and put your attention on that which you do have control over which one of the things that he talked about is how we have control over our thoughts and actions, nothing else. We can only choose how we respond to life. We don't control what is actually going on. Or you think about somebody like Seneca, who was a statesman, a philosopher, and a dramatist. And now somebody like him, right, he was essentially had friends in high places. He advised the emperor Nero. Now, one of the things that Seneca would do is he would practice moderation or he would practice negative visualization as a way of balancing himself out. Now, the way that he did this is that Seneca, being a statesman, lived a pretty good life when it comes to a material sense. Right? He would have these extravagant parties, and at the same time, he would practice moderation because he was able to access so much, as well as negative visualization because he was practicing detachment from the things that he owned and from the, his material possessions. Now, this allowed him to be more in his center, be more balanced and more at peace with himself. Or you think of somebody like the, the founder of Stoicism, Zeno, who essentially discovered and built this philosophy after a shipwreck. So he was a merchant, he had a shipwreck, lost everything he had, and he started to essentially focus his attention on that which he could control. And that's where a lot of the teachings came from. So these five intentions, they're inspired from stories like this. They're inspired from practices like reflection, from embracing you know that which you cannot control and tr like truly taking it in as well as a lot of the principles from Zen, like the practice of non-attachment, like the practice of being totally present in the process of what you're doing, like the, the, the Zen ideal of chopping wood and carrying water, which is basically a way of just saying, just do the thing every day, just be consistent in the actions that you take and continue moving, continue you know, making progress on whatever it is that you're doing. So all of these weave together to create these five intentions. And here's how you can use the five intentions as a way of creating a deeper sense of balance in your life and enjoyment so that you are able to, yes, get more done, but also able to be at peace with yourself, able to accept yourself totally and completely in the process and enjoy your life, be able to enjoy the richness of the present moment each and every day. So the first of the five Zen Stoic intentions is embrace. And embrace is linked with the experience of feeling. So to embrace, it is a way of feeling. It is a way of you actually feeling your sensations, your emotions, your feelings, all of it. Now, why is this important when it comes to living a balanced life? Oftentimes, the refusal to actually feel our feelings, the refusal to embrace what we're actually feeling in any one given moment is often going to lead us to a behavior that is a short-term gratification. And usually we're doing it because we're feeling something unpleasant and we don't want to feel that anymore. So we go and we distract ourselves from the feeling or we start telling ourselves a story as to why we're the hero and the person who's upsetting us is the villain. And when we get into that, we actually don't allow ourselves to feel a feeling. So According to the work of Dr. Jill Taylor, the emotional 
experience that we have of stress hormones that occurs in our body is a 90 second cycle. So in other words, it only takes 90 seconds for your nervous system to flush out all of those stress hormones and for you to come to a state of centeredness or balance. And everything after that is a choice that you're making through the mind. Now, I think a caveat to understanding this properly is to understand that yes, while an emotional, while the chemical process of an emotion only takes 90 seconds, most people never allow themselves to feel all 90 of those seconds, which is why people have what I like to call emotional debt, which is essentially all the unprocessed stuff that they have of their past, right? Unprocessed negative emotions, unprocessed unmet needs, limiting beliefs, stories, incongruent values, inner conflicts, all that stuff. Now, emotional debt is often created because we're not, first and foremost, we're just not letting ourselves feel. And when we don't let ourselves feel, those emotions don't just disappear, they get stored in our tissues. They get stored in our muscles and they can lead to things like ailments, disease, pain. I mean, like I had chronic pain for 20 years for a, an emotion that I never allowed myself to feel until I was 31 years old. So these, this is actually a big deal. And sometimes the rigidity of stoicism, or at least the perceived rigidity of stoicism around emotions, doesn't actually give us the opportunity to fully feel whatever it is that we're feeling. So here's how you can think about it. When you are experiencing a sensation, let's say somebody does something and you experience a sensation of anger or outrage. In that moment that you're having that reaction, one of the, the principles or one of the quotes in Stoicism that Seneca would talk about is how the best response to anger is delay. And I would say it's not just the best response to anger, it's the best response to any big emotional reaction that you have, whether it's anger, sadness, fear, hurt, shame, guilt, any of those things that come up, you can use this process of delay. And when you delay, you also activate what Dr. Jill Taylor is talking about by really harnessing and embracing this 90 second cycle. Because most of the time in those 90 seconds, we distract ourselves. We don't know how to process or we need to function. We need to be able to show up and you know, deliver a presentation at work, or we need to be able to show up, you know, for our, our kids, or we need to be able to show up in a sport that we're playing, and we can't fully feel that emotion. It doesn't mean that it goes away. So the idea here is, is to use that principle of delay to actually stop and feel the sensations of what you're feeling. Because for most people, they don't feel that full 90 seconds, and they don't actually get over whatever that emotion was for decades sometimes. Like I've talked to, I mean, myself as an example, but I've talked to so many clients that there's emotions that they were feeling when they were you know, three, four years old that they have not fully felt even into their thirties and forties. So when you stop and delay, give yourself 90 seconds to fully embrace whatever it is that the feeling is. When I say embrace, what I mean is actually sit with the sensations. So just like in meditation where the idea is to come back to the breath or come back to a mantra, if you can just sit and focus on the sensations you're experiencing and let that full 90 seconds to pass, you'll notice that you feel the sensations down to a zero. They're going to come in like a bell curve, right? They're going to start, they're going to peak, and then they're going to start to, come, start to come down. If you can just sit with the emotion for that, and not think about it, not weave a story in your head, not start saying something, not you know have this outburst of this reaction, you'll find that you are able to find a lot more calm and balance in each moment. So it's important to be able to embrace that. Now, what is it that typically sets us off emotionally is when we are attached to things. When we're attached to thoughts, when we're attached to the idea of permanence. So if you start to pull in the Zen idea of non-attachment, Part of letting yourself fully feel something is to experience the moment that you are detaching, right? If you let yourself fully feel the feeling, that perceived pain that you're experiencing is the pain and the discomfort of detaching from something that is not in your control, detaching from something that is not worth attaching to because it is creating suffering in your system. So in order to use embrace as, as a way of creating balance, Simply let yourself delay whatever reaction or whatever immediate response that you have to any one emotion is. Viktor Frankl, who was the writer of Man's Search for Meaning, he talked about this idea of how in the space in between stimulus and response is where all of our freedom exists. So if you think about it, whenever something happens, like let's say somebody cuts us off in traffic and then we feel this like outrage or anger that happens in between the space of the person cutting you off and the actual experience of anger itself, there is a space in between there. In that space is where you would practice that delay, where you just essentially sit with it and embrace whatever the feelings or sensations might have. 
Some people think that if they let themselves feel it, it's going to overtake them. Couldn't be further from the truth. If you let yourself feel the feelings that you have, you'll allow yourself to actually embrace the experience and let that full 90 second cycle to pass. And you'll notice that you actually come back into a place of calm and centeredness. Now, the next intention is the intention of understanding, which maps to the human experience of thinking. Now, when your thinking is out of balance, you'll notice that your world feels out of balance because it's not the things in life that upset us or that cause us suffering. It is our thinking about those things. And when our thinking is imbalanced, usually it's because we are attached to certain thoughts and we are not asking ourselves certain questions. We're essentially assuming things to be true. So when it comes to this idea of understanding, understanding begins with simply asking yourself a new question. In Stoicism, what is practiced a lot is this idea of self-reflection and self-reflection and character examination. In other words, asking yourself, you know, where did I mess up here or where could I have done better in this situation? Rather than telling yourself like I suck at this thing or I'm no good at this thing, Start to ask yourself new questions because anytime that we make statements, we essentially trick our brain into thinking that what we've said is a fact rather than a question that is posing the opportunity to have a solution. So we use understanding in order to create balance. And one of the best ways to do this is like Stoic philosophy talks about all the time, which is a practice of self-reflection. So journaling, writing your thoughts down, asking yourself questions. One of the questions that is my go-to anytime I'm having a self-limiting thought or a negative thought, is the question that comes from the work of Byron Katie, which is, is this really true? Can I absolutely know that this is true? And 100% of the time, especially when I ask that second question of, can I absolutely know that this is true? The answer is always no, because I can't absolutely know anything. And so part of embodying the intention of understanding is to lead with a sense of curiosity, lead with a a childlike enthusiasm and curiosity with wonder and awe to the things that you're experiencing. And one of the things that Zen talks about is how there is such richness in the present moment if you just allow yourself to be in it. And when you just allow yourself to be in the present moment, you are essentially coming into your perspective of having wonder, curiosity with everything that you're experiencing. One of the things that Seneca talks about is to keep your youthful enthusiasm because you'll be able to use it later. And one of the ways to maintain a sense of youthful enthusiasm is to actually continuously ask questions, make sure that you're checking assumptions, be able to separate your story from the actual facts of what's going on. Oftentimes what we're actually reacting to and what we're essentially stopping ourselves from feeling those emotions like we talked about in that first intention is we are stopping ourselves from feeling because we're telling ourselves a story in our mind about how things are rather than actually embracing and being present to the reality of what is. So ask yourself new questions and build a practice of journaling and self-reflection. Just writing things down, getting them out of your head and onto paper alone is a very powerful practice to start to balance your thoughts out. It allows you to bring your, the, the formless into the form and allow you to actually create new understandings of yourself and of life. One of the best ways to essentially find balance is to start to know yourself, to study yourself. Right, Dojin Zenji, uh, who is the, the founder of Zen, would talk about this idea of in order to study Zen, you must study the self. And in order to study the self, it is important to forget the self. And you forget the self when you start to ask questions, when you start to question your assumptions about who you are, and start to expand your understanding and perspective of who you are and who you could be. The next Zen Stoic intention is the intention of discipline. And you can use discipline to find balance by doing and focusing on what is meaningful. So this is associated to the experience of doing. When we talk about discipline, we are talking about doing what you find truly meaningful and focusing on what matters to you letting go of the rest. So you can also bring in Epictetus's dichotomy of control here to essentially take a moment to realize that the things that are out of your control don't actually matter. They don't materialize into new experiences. What actually matters is your state of being and your willingness to take action. So when it comes to finding balance in a Zen stoic way, using discipline each and every day to, again, embody certain stoic virtues like voluntary discomfort and giving yourself challenges. This could look like doing workouts. This could look like a a sauna or a cold plunge, doing things that will create that voluntary discomfort because as you engage in activities that create discomfort, again, not only are you going to grow because you're going to push past your perceived limitations, but you're also going to expand your ability to actually 
hold the quote unquote negative feelings that you might experience in the face of adversity and uncertainty. So having a, a daily discipline, whether that is a daily discipline of working out or a daily discipline of working on your business or a passion project or something creative, these are all really important for stretching your mind and allowing you to do what is meaningful to you. When you do what's meaningful to you, you will feel in balance, even if you're wildly unbalanced, even if you're spending a disproportionate amount of time on something that is truly meaningful to you, you will feel a sense of centeredness because it's not actually balance that we're looking for. What we're looking for is a sense of meaning, a sense of fulfillment, a sense of growth, and in actually experiencing life the way that we want to, in, in a fulfilled way, in a satisfied way. And so by doing what is truly meaningful to you and doing it consistently, you'll be able to essentially embody that Zen stoic intention of discipline. Now, discipline is all about doing. It's all about taking action. And what action is, right? We, we all hear this in personal development that you got to take action, but we never stop to think about what does that actually mean? What does the word action mean? Action is anything that you do to improve upon the current situation. So one of the things that Shunryu Suzuki would say is that you're perfect the way that you are and you can use a little improvement. So this is this paradoxical idea that yes, like life is perfect, you're perfect exactly as you are in this moment, and at the same time, we can always improve upon the experience of life. And so every iteration of ourselves that we improve upon through action, through discipline, through doing what is meaningful, is going to give us that sensation of being balanced within ourselves, being centered within ourselves. Now, the other thing that you can also think about with regards to discipline is that anytime you decide to do something meaningful, you are going to run into your own obstacles. And one of the things that Marcus Aurelius famously said is that the impediment to action advances action. What stands in the way becomes the way. Ryan Holiday wrote a whole book on this where the obstacle is the way. The obstacle that stands in front of us that is being essentially put in our path through life and through the pursuit of what is meaningful is actually there to help us grow. It's there to be turned into an opportunity. So in our pursuit of discipline, the idea is that, yes, sometimes things are going to get hard. That's why voluntary discomfort and challenge, giving yourself little crucibles you know, each and every day or each and every week, is a great way of not only building a sense of resilience and capacity, but also a way of moving forward and growing more. Sometimes executing discipline might be done in a counterintuitive way, right? depending on, if we go back to that first question, what's the speed that you want to grow? What's going to actually allow you to feel in balance and centered? Sometimes discipline could be the discipline of resting, the discipline of not doing. So if, as an example, if you're you know working out and you're doing everything that you can, if you're not eating correctly and you're not recovering, then you're missing those steps. So in order to do what is meaningful, it's important to tune into yourself, asking yourself, how fast do I want to grow or how fast or slow do I want to grow and what is actually truly meaningful to me. The fourth Zen Stoic intention that will allow you to feel in balance while practicing it each and every day is the intention of sincerity. This is one of the most important intentions when it comes to experiencing a balanced life because sincerity is about focusing on what really matters to you and expressing what really matters to you. So the intention of sincerity is mapped to the experience of expression uh, and expression you can think of as bringing the formless into the form. So in other words, bringing things from the mind into the physical world. So the way that we do that is through our words. Now the words that we speak construct the house that we live in as one of my good mentors, Dr. Mario Garcia would say, is that the words that we're using ultimately are going to construct our experience. And so when you speak sincerely, you are talking about what's most important to you. You're expressing what is alive within you rather than attempting to impress. Now, why is this so important when it comes to balance? Because if you're not expressing sincerely, if you're telling little white lies or you're embellishing truths and you're essentially bending the truth, and you're doing these things, it will create weakness in your system. It will create instability in your system, and you will not feel balanced. The psychologist Carl Rogers talked about this idea of subception, which is sensation that we feel without bringing conscious awareness to it. And whenever we tell something that is not true, or we're being insincere, or we're trying to impress rather than express, what we actually end up feeling is this shakiness or instability in our body. So if you're living a life that is not authentic to you and you're not being sincere in your words and actions, then you will never feel balanced no matter how much you achieve, no matter how perfect everything seems. So the idea here is that only doing things that you genuinely want to participate in, 
That doesn't mean only doing fun and easy things, by the way. You might genuinely want to participate in a certain challenge. You may ge- genuinely want to go and work out or, or do hill sprints or go hit the sauna or the cold plunge you know, for the purpose of expanding your capacity. But the idea is not doing things to impress others, not doing things to appear a certain way that is not you. Living your life authentically, speaking authentically is going to allow you to feel balanced and centered in your everyday life. One of the great Zen teachers, Suzuki Roshi, talked about this idea that the most important thing is to accept yourself and stand on your own two feet. Or the way that Seneca described, he described this idea of euthemia, which is to believe in yourself as well as to trust that you're on the right path. And in order to actually trust that you're on the right path, to stand on your own two feet and to believe in yourself, you need to know yourself and you know yourself through the expression of what is alive within you. So simply expressing sincerely, being truthful about what you think and feel can be a great step into finding that balance within your own body, within your own system. And the fifth Zen Stoic intention is the intention of unity. Now the intention of unity is best exercised through stillness and meditation. This idea of unity is associated with the experience of being, simply being here and experiencing life as it is. Both Zen and Stoic philosophy talk about the importance of the present moment. Stoicism talks about the gratitude for the present moment. Zen talks about the richness that can be found in the present moment. And by experiencing contemplative meditation or simply just sitting in stillness and just observing it and and taking in everything that's around you can be a very powerful way to find a sense of balance. It is this idea of surrendering to the stream of life and not trying to control everything, not trying to view yourself as some separate ego that is you know stuck here in nature but rather realize like it is said in stoicism that you are a part of nature you're not separate from it so simply sitting in stillness sitting in meditation can be a very powerful way to experience this now one of my favorite exercises for experiencing the intention of unity is the sovereign awareness technique which you can find in the free school community the zen stoic dojo the link is in the description of the show notes and you can join there and learn the sovereign awareness technique which is essentially what I do instead of meditation, as I found it to be a very powerful and connective experience that has given me way more than meditation ever has in terms of the richness of the present moment. But this idea of being able to relax into the present, as well as realize that you're not alone here, right? And part of unity is not just relaxing into the present moment and being, but also being a human being and relaxing into the nature of what a human being is. Like Marcus Aurelius would say, we are made for each other. We are social beings. And it is not just about yourself, but it is about being able to help others, have compassion for others, and realize that we are not alone in this and that we can always extend kindness and compassion to others. And how Thich Nhat Hanh, who was a Zen master, also would talk about how compassion is a verb, realizing that it is not just you, it is another who is existing here with you and so many others. So when you think about it from that perspective, It is about relaxing into the unity of what it is to be a human being and meditating on the interconnectedness of all of us. When you do that, you start to realize that balance always exists anyway and that you don't need to create balance. You can just relax into it because the universe is always balanced. The universe, reality, nature is always showing you where you're out of balance. And it shows you where you're out of balance because it's usually the areas that you have essentially removed yourself from where you're no longer present in. And in those areas, you'll start to experience the sensation of not being balanced. But if you use these five intentions, you embrace your emotions and feelings. You allow yourself to fully feel them. You use thinking to ask yourself new questions, to reflect on yourself, to have a deeper understanding of who you are. You act on what is meaningful through the discipline, the, through the intention of discipline and doing You allow yourself to be totally sincere in your expression and you embody the intention of unity in just being who you are and being here now in the present moment. You'll find balance in all things that you do and you'll be able to very consciously and intentionally decide on how quick or slow you want your experience of growth to be in this life. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you're looking to dive deeper or wondering how you can apply these philosophies into your life, be sure to join our free school community, the Zen Stoic Dojo. In the Zen Stoic Dojo, 
It is a group of like-minded individuals all committed to the path of unshakable inner peace in their health, wealth, and relationships. There you'll find free tools, resources, courses, and individuals that you can discuss the podcast with and ask your most important questions. Be sure to click the link in the description of this podcast to join the Zen Stoic Dojo on school.